me start with Kaepernick. Your reaction to what you saw and how the Internet kind of grabbed a hold of it and put it in a tourniquet. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I've, I've changed my mind a little. I, I reacted like a lot of people, like initially saying, it, even if you thought this protest was, it, it was uh, admirable or, or uh, had merit, is he the guy to do it, a quarterback making $12 million who struggled for two years? But I guess that's really not the case because then I thought, okay, what if Cam Newton did it? How would, would we be happier with that? I don't think so. I think we'd be pretty unhappy with that. The, the only problem I have, I'd say the main problem I have with his argument that this, this isn't about the military and that's not what he sees with the flag. Well, when, when we have people in the South flying the stars and bars saying that this isn't about slavery, that's not what it means to us, we dismiss that pretty quickly. So... Why do we give him a break on what this flag means to him when it does have obvious military meanings to most of us? What if Kaepernick did this as a member of the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, that, that would be that would be unfortunate, an unfortunate decision by him. I mean, San Francisco might be one of the places where, or the place. Yeah, look, I, I'm sure there's a lot of 49er fans who hate this. Uh, don't get me wrong, but. Uh, yeah, it would not. It would not play well in Dallas. That's would it, would he get obvious? Would he get cut? I don't think so. I don't think Jerry Jones would do that. I mean, uh, here's the thing. Now, I mean, he's barely played, and he hasn't played well. Yeah. And they might have been planning to cut him for uh, obvious financial reasons anyway. If they didn't think he can play, but now if they cut him, everybody's going to say it's because of this. Tim Callishaw, Dallas Morning News, around the Horn Star, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. When you saw Romo first go down, your thought was? Uh, I thought that looks bad. And I thought, wow, I, I've tried to make the argument that he's not injury prone. And maybe, maybe that wasn't a good argument to make. Um, you know, the fact that he was up walking around shortly after that, it still made you think he, he can't get hit. He, 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 this happens when he gets hit. And he wears all that. I mean, that's why people think he's fat, which he's obviously not. He's got so much protective stuff under there. And still, it doesn't help. And so even if it's what we think it is now, I mean, does anybody think he's going to come back and then play the next eight or nine games or whatever's left without injury? I don't, I don't think anyone thinks that. Any official word from the Cowboys on Romo? <clears throat> None at all, because Jason Garrett is never forthcoming on injuries. He won't even rule him out for the open. Because that's what Jason Garrett does. Jerry, meanwhile, is, is his own doctor. He will give us <laughs> he will give us medical information immediately after the game before the doctors have finished. He'll be all oh, six to ten weeks. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, but I mean, he, he has to wear this brace. He's supposed to wear this brace for five or six weeks. So he's not playing till sometime in October at the, at the very least. So how has the view on Dak Prescott changed, or has it changed? Because he's been almost perfect in the preseason. <laughs> That's what's funny, because it was such a disaster here last year, obviously. 1-11 in the games Romo didn't start. And I would say a lot of people, and I'm in this group, uh, don't think from a football standpoint there will be a drastic change. Now, I mean, it, it, it's three preseason games. It's 50 passes or whatever he's thrown. But he certainly looks like he can do – a lot of things. And we've seen Russell Wilson. We've seen uh, RG3's rookie year. He was very good. I mean, quarterbacks can do it. And he is helped by the fact that, you know, they should have the best running game in the league. So it's not like coming in to play for, you know, the Patriots where you got to throw it 40 times a game to have a chance for success. I view this sort of like the Ravens. When uh, the Ravens started Joe Flacco, they had injuries to their quarterback, and Flacco came in. They had a good running game and a good defense, and then they sort of e eased him in to say, you don't have to make a lot of big plays. Mm -hmm. Is Jason Garrett going to do that with Dak Prescott, or is he going to say, let's run the same offense that Tony runs? Well, I think they were going to do that anyway with Tony. I mean, that, that was to protect Tony and to protect his defense. Their whole idea in drafting Ezekiel Elliott was to repeat 2014, get back to being the best running team in the league, keep the ball for 33 minutes a game, uh, and, and let Tony throw 400 passes and not 600. So that won't change. I mean, they, 
They want to be a very run-heavy team, but they can do a few things with Prescott, obviously, that they couldn't do with Romo. I mentioned that they luck into Dak Prescott. They did their best to try to screw this up the last couple of years from Manziel to Paxton Lynch to Connor Shaw. You know, they, they could have bought, brought in Nick Foles. You know, they still don't have that veteran backup quarterback here. And then Dak Prescott gets a DUI, falls in the draft, and next thing you know, they have to settle for him, and he's the starting quarterback. Is there a scenario, though, Tim, can Dak Prescott actually win this job this year? You mean go out and play and, and, and keep it? Yeah. Uh, you mean like if, if they're 6-2, and two, will Jerry Jones come out and say, uh, Romo's had a setback? <laughs> uh, we're going to keep him. We're going to keep him under wraps the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that's unlikely, but obviously if, if Prescott plays really well, the fans here always love the backup quarterback more than the starter. Oh, and it, it would create a very, if he keeps playing like this, it would create a very interesting scenario. Are you on around the horn later today? Danny, we are off this week for the U.S. Open. Oh, no. This is in your wheelhouse now, Tim. Oh, my gosh. We got Prescott. We got Kaepernick. We got Dallas stuff. We got the Rangers just dominating the mm, tribe. Maybe not the Rangers. And, uh, maybe not the Rangers. Okay, probably not the Rangers. Yeah, probably not going to we'll be. A, about, yeah, that's not a topic born we'll around the horn. We'll talk about them in October. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, no, no, no shows this week. Oh, man. Well, we appreciate you giving your hot takes that you would say for Around the Horn for this our This is the audience. only place you're going to get them. I'm not even writing for the paper this week. Oh. This is it. This is it. Whatever I've got, I'm spilling it right here. Uh, McLovin, can we label this exclusive with Kalashaw on the Dan Patrick Show? Any particular thing he said or just the whole thing? The whole thing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just one big hot take <laughs> or one big hot mess. One of the two. Yes, uh, one of the two. Thank you, Tim. All right, Danny. That's uh, Tim Kalashow, Dallas Morning News, and uh, sometimes on Around the Horn when the Open's not on. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.